All right, guys, welcome back to the Airgun Podcast. This is my very first video recorded episode. I got my brother Don Shula here. You guys know him. Um, and we'll get into uh, some details around what you got going, what's new with you. But since he's here in town, I figured, hey, might as well have him on the podcast. Uh, he's always been one of my biggest supporters. So I figure for my a new video uh, platform that he'll be on there. Um, but anyway, I just want to give you guys a little bit of an idea of where we've been with the podcast and uh, where it's going. So as you guys know, if you've been following me for a long time, it's been just audio. And uh, I've been wanting to do video, but haven't quite been able to put the time and effort into it. So I'm working on that, as you can see. And um, a few months ago, or maybe about four months ago, we just got a new house. That's where we're at right now. And did a lot of remodeling on it. And my wife was very pregnant. So there's been a lot that's gone on since I released uh, the episode previous to this one. Um, so thanks for being patient and bearing with me. I've been working on a lot of stuff uh, behind the scenes, but uh, we have a new baby. So there's a three week old baby upstairs also uh, along with our two year old. So he was born in the back of the car on the way to the birth center. So that was pretty cool. Should have uh, named him Carson. Uh, Carson was one of the names we talked about, but not because of that. Um, <laughs> but Baby Boone. Uh, so we got Benji and Boone. Uh, but anyway, so that was pretty crazy. Cool experience. My wife is a pimp. She just delivered the baby herself in the backseat of the car while I was driving. Um, mostly because I didn't have time to stop. It already it just happened so fast. But anyway, so... Uh, yeah, things have been a little bit crazy with the new baby, just getting into the swing of things. Uh, and all of you guys who have sent me messages on social media, you've said, hey, family comes first, take care of that. No worries. We'll see you when you get back. So thanks for being patient and working with me there. Um, I've been working on getting sponsors for the podcast as well. So I have some new sponsors um, or we are affiliated with certain companies now. And I'll have uh, more details on that for you guys as we introduce them and bring them up into the, uh, the podcast content. So, uh, that being said, you don't have to worry. I'm not going to have like ads for like Walmart or like belly bands or something like that. It's all going to be stuff that is, that I use personally and that I care about and things that I, uh, think you guys will find valuable. So it's not going to be like, you know, all right, now let's hear from this smoothie shop. And you can get a wheatgrass shot or something like that. So it's all going to be good stuff. Um, wheatgrass sucks. Yeah, dude. Screw wheatgrass. Um, and regular grass. <sighs> you ever eat that? Once or twice. Don't do it. So anyway, that's kind of where we've been. Just wanted to catch you guys up on all that. And uh, we'll see how this video podcasting uh, goes. This will be in person, obviously, because I, like I said, my brother's in town. Uh, the other ones are going to have to be um, over something like Skype or something like that. I'm actually working with Ryan Ream, and he's helping me out trying to figure out how to um, make sure I have good camera quality and microphone and audio and all that stuff um, for these new recordings. But anyway, that's what's up. This is our makeshift studio for the time being, and uh, hopefully it gets to a point where I can just have a traveling studio and then I can go out to where people are and uh, get the podcast episodes recorded, which I've talked about before. You guys know that stuff. So anyway, let's dive into it. Uh, thanks for coming back to the podcast. If you guys like this, make sure to leave a thumbs up, uh, like, subscribe, share it, all the good stuff. Tell us how handsome we are and that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, let's kick it off. So Don Shula. Uh What's new? Why are you in town? I'm in town to help our older brother get all of his things packed up at his house because uh, in February, we started talking real seriously about getting a piece of property and finding somewhere that we could do our own thing and, you know, opening up more uh, hunting opportunities and things of that nature. And uh, we actually found a place in Texas. So... Um, 
he bought it and I, you know, spent the last couple of years in Arizona. Uh, I liked it out there. They have a lot of, uh, they have a lot of inclusion with the air guns in, in the hunting rules and regulations. Um, and Texas also themselves have quite a few, you know, opportunities for you to get out there and hunt with air guns. So I just figured that's, uh, you know, it's just the next step in the journey. It's just one of those things that I plan on doing, you know, as often as I possibly can. So, and five acres, I mean, that's a, that's a decent little chunk, at least to get started on. So, uh, I'm going to take full advantage of it. Heck yeah, dude. And it's cool because, well, one, more than just for air guns. I mean, sure, that's something that we've gotten into over the past several years. And um, it's been awesome. And that's what I'm pursuing, you know, kind of like as my passion and, you know, pursuing to do that full time. Like that's kind of my my goal. But I know it's not necessarily for you, even though you love air guns and you have some really awesome ones. Uh, so give us a rundown of what is the dream for Don Shula? I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, everywhere I go, every time I take a step out of my comfort zone, I learn that, you know, I can take care of myself and I'm, I don't have a lot of things to worry about. I got no wife, no children. Like, I only have to worry about me. So it would just be to, you know, live comfortably is, is all I want. And to be able to, you know, provide healthy things for myself off of the land rather than, you know, fast food and all that other fun stuff. So when I moved out to Arizona, it was, you know, that was 74 pounds ago. So I just want to continue a healthy lifestyle. I want to be able to, you know, just go out and have fun. Eventually I, you know, would like to get myself a decent chunk of property out there and just go shooting all day. Maybe start putting up videos about that. Who knows? Freaking it's just, it's just, I'm just looking for more opportunity and making the jump and going to a different state in a different area just opens up a whole new world of opportunity. Yeah. And when you moved out to Arizona a couple of years ago, we, we were stoked for you. And I was personally stoked because I'm like, oh dude, Arizona has great air gun laws. They're super inclusive. Like you said, and you're going to be able to do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, COVID kind of got in the way of that because it shut down some like national parks and all kinds of stuff like that in Arizona. Yeah. And also you still lived in like a city, like you lived in like a neighborhood. Right. So it, w it was hard for you. Like a lot of people in the air gun industry um, or people who are into the, the sport of air guns, you know, they'll live out in the country somewhere or they'll have like an acre of land where they can shoot right. on, or they'll have, you know, more than that. And it's hard being in the city. Um, you know, even back here, I've got about 35. My main shooting distance is 35. And then if I stretch it from corner to corner, which I don't normally shoot that distance in the backyard, it's like 43 yards. So that is way more than I had, but still it makes it really difficult. It's like, I don't know, just a challenging thing. So you actually having five acres of like land and not like developed land either. Right. I mean, it's going to be dope. It's full of trees. It's the wildlife out there is ridiculous. I didn't know that there was wild flying squirrels in Texas, but apparently there are, and there's no bag limit on those bad boys. So I might freaking might squirrels. end up sending you a flying squirrel coat if I get enough of them, dude. <laughs> if you just find a really big one, then that will do the job too. Yeah, that's it's probably true. But that if there's a flying squirrel big <laughs> enough to make a jacket out of that size, I'm gonna leave it alone. That's true. Or you could get a record for largest squirrel. It's really up to you. Yeah, you know? there's all sorts of potential when that comes in. Yeah, play. I could <laughs> capture it. Train it, ride it. And, yeah. Because they don't really fly. You know, they, they're like, they gl glide. <laughs> but, so if you're just on the back of like a six foot squirrel, dude, that could, they would just jump like 30 feet in the air and just kind of glide you to your next destination. I mean. Yeah, no, it'd be rad. 
If you find one, let me know. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a video of me attempting to get on it and then getting mauled by a <laughs> six-foot flying squirrel. They, they, they probably are carnivorous at that point, at that size, you know? You would have to be. Yeah, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think that the sugar glider that we had growing up, it had sharp teeth and it would eat those like mealworms and stuff. It oh, would yeah. eat like fruit and avocados, I think. But it would eat mealworms and then it had like retractable teeth, like it had sharp teeth, but we watched the teeth like come out of the gums, like triple in length. And they were sharp, dude. Sometimes he bit us. Yeah, he's so. a sketchy little bugger. Yeah, and then our cat ate him. Through the cage. Yeah. It was the most horrific sound you could ever imagine late at night. They already made a bad sound, but when they're getting eaten by a cat, it's <laughs> the sound is worse. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, there's going to be tons and tons and tons of opportunities for um, hunting out there just in general, but like, yeah, you know, big game and um and the amount of exotic species. animals out there yeah texas i think the i think you can legally hunt almost any animal on planet earth there besides like giraffes and elephants but you can take zebra like yeah. it's it's crazy uh chris from uh you know the wild man he yeah. he was telling me that there are texas has done such a good job with um exotic game species that there will be species that are endangered in parts of africa but there are more numbers of those exotic species in texas because of these high fence ranches and stuff like that where they breed them and they're selective about them um that they've like repopulated them so they're endangered there but there's like way more <laughs> here just in one state so it's pretty cool that we can do things like that because I mean, who knows if they will, but you could then take those from the, the plenty here in the States, in Texas specifically, and repopulate, and repopulate yeah. like the native land, which would be really cool. But anyway, that was just a cool thing that he was telling me. Um, but uh, yeah, so what are you looking forward to most out there? Because another thing that you are very into and that my wife offered to, to pay you to stay with us and cook you're a freaking chef dude so i don't know if you're legally can call yourself a chef no technically was, was but tech school for uh, a couple years but freight dude you're good at cooking and pj clark was impressed when he came over uh when he visited here in colorado and then my wife was like offered to pay you to stay and just cook food for us which is kind of what happened to your last roommate yeah. that you lived with in Denver and then moved to Arizona with. Yeah. You kind of offered the same thing. So that being said, if people are offering you places to stay and to pay you virtually, uh, maybe you should pursue that kind of thing. So well, tell us about your cooking. I, I don't know. I think about that a lot. I mean, there's one of the best things about Texas is they know a lot about barbecue and I love a good brisket. And, you know, I, I just, I love all things barbecue. Uh, I can't say no to them no matter how hard I try. So, you know, maybe even, maybe even having a little, little food truck, something that I could, you know, travel around and go visit all the places that I would like to go and visit and just, you know, have my ability to make money with me the entire time. Do you know what you freaking say? You get that going and then you bring the, you travel with the, the air gun shooting competitions to like the pyramid cup and EBR and RMAC. And I absolutely. You, and you do deliver that. that barbecue sling and meat to everyone. And you, you sling the barbecue to everyone. Amen. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> there's, I think there's potential there. No, I guess, I guess that's kind of, you know, it's a potential dream. It's something that I think I would enjoy because I, you know, not that I've never made bad food, but it's very rare that it happens. Well, dude, sometimes, I mean, it's, it's just like a, like a professional athlete, like 
even their bad play is still better than most of the world's good plays, you know? That's why they're there. Right. But, I mean, so that you make a bad play, whatever. And I've never eaten bad food from you. I've heard you say, oh, sorry, this isn't this way. And I'm like, dude, this is freaking perfectly fine. I will. Well, you know how you're your own worst critic. Yeah. It's just one of those things. That's true. Which is a very weird thing. I wonder if narcissistic people are their own worst critic, though. There's only one way to find out. Become narcissists. Meet one and bring them on your podcast. I could. Who knows? Any narcissists out there? Holler. <laughs> who are in the airgun industry? I bet you a few people will send me some names now. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to anyone. I won't say anyone's names. Um, but frick, dude. So hunting and cooking. Why do you think those two things are for you personally so captivating? Like, why are you pursuing it? Like people look at you, they see tattoos, they see an Abe Lincoln beard. And it's because the Lord didn't bless me with a mustache like the rest of you guys. <laughs> and he took my hair. Well, when <laughs> 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 Crystal Leah podcast, he's talking about a guy that had upside down head. Yeah. Yeah, like a big hair, big beard and no hair. Anyway, um, I, don't I mean, know, man. I if was... I was judging a book by its cover, I wouldn't think that guy's into air guns and is an incredible chef. I would think. I don't know. He rides a Harley. I don't know. I mean, you know, number one, I think the reason that the cooking means so much to me is because I've been doing it since we were kids. Like, you know, mom and dad would be tired in the morning. And since we were children and we never slept, I would wake up and, you know, started with eggs, man. I'd come around and ask everybody else that was up, you guys want eggs? I'm going to make some eggs. So it's, I, I guess... That's what started the interest because I could always make, you know, semi-decent food. And that's what made me go to culinary school. And that's what set me on that path. And I've just always enjoyed it, you know, and right. it's, it's important as well. And, you know, the, the diet change that I did in order to slim down was, you know, it wasn't difficult because I was, I was the one making my own food, uh, and I enjoy, you know, I enjoy what I make pretty much 100% of the time. So that, that would just, you know, it just, it just makes things easier. It's, it's one of those things that I enjoy and one of the things that I'm good at. So it brings me satisfaction. Well, let's touch on that for a little bit. And you can kind of fast track us, uh, you know, speed up the timeline, but as kids, you used to be a, l a little bit of a chunky dunker. Mm -hmm. You know, you were you were down with the thickness and... <laughs> Amen. We could rewrite the song. But how, how did you... Do you think being oh, I think, overweight yeah, my love for food. played a role in your love for food? And then how did that kind of transform into you being like oh okay well i can still cook really good food that's really healthy for you that also isn't necessarily just eating a ton of vegetables by the way no and and get results of like losing a ton of weight because you you know you were in high school a long time ago so you've had ebbs and flows of gaining weight losing weight and just kind of like ah like little kicks like i want to get healthier lose a little bit of weight but you've really lost a ton of weight and you've maintained it. So kind of walk us through the fatness to the slimness and how do you still cook delicious food and kind of what was your, what was your diet? Like what was, what, what has yielded these awesome results with delicious food? I mean, the fatness started, I think after I quit playing sports when I was young, because Nintendo 64 came out. And I was like, I don't want to play baseball this season. Like, I want to absolutely destroy Mario 64. Like, and it just started from there. And then it was, you know, 
getting all hot and sweaty playing video games and then going to cool down with like a, you know, little Debbie snack cake or, you know, those oatmeal cream pies or those little Debbie's brownies. And they were delicious. Yeah, not the most nutritious. Not zero, zero nutrition in them, actually. Like Almost negative nutrition. Yeah, they're garbage. But yeah, that was, that essentially was the beginning of the process, I would say. And then from there, it just, <laughs> it snowballed, you know, just when we moved to our new house, right at the beginning of middle school, there was that 7-Eleven that we just had to go down the street and walk through that path and mm -hmm. through the field and it was any spare, you know, change or birthday money or anything like that saved up. Just Dude, side note, there are some sick jumps there. Oh yeah. I wish they wouldn't have bulldozed it. Those, those were good. We used to send you as a test jumper. We would let you hit the biggest ones to see how much speed we needed before we would attempt them. You cleared one that had two sofas in it, one right after the other. It was like a, it's probably like a 15 or 16 foot hole and you just, you just crushed it. So. Do I remember being really, really little and watching Evil Knievel, like two and three years old. And just thinking, wow, that's how I want to die. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as soon as I could ride a bike or any kind of thing, um, I just wanted to go for it. But anyway, yeah. So then we yeah, have access to not good food, not yeah, healthy things. Continue and, to eat unhealthy, you know, for the rest of my life up until a certain point. Um, you know, I, I slimmed down a little bit, uh, you know, cause I had to do a diet change and all that stuff. When I first found out that I had a tumor in my head and I was like, Oh crap, that's no good. So I lost some weight. Time went on. I didn't die. And I sort of fell back into old habits and, you know, started putting weight back on and just continued to be unhealthy until the, my buddy that I lived with in Denver and then moved out to Arizona with was like, Hey, like, are you tired of being fat and ugly? And I was like, yeah. He's like, do you want to just be ugly? And I was like, hell yeah. So you and me both. That's what it turned into is, you know, it's easy when you have somebody to help you, like, you know, you both keep each other in check when it comes to certain things, go to the grocery store at the same time, start reading labels on everything, you know, seeing all the good things that are in what you're buying. And, you know, when you legitimately start to see the progress that you're making, that's the sort of thing that changes it. And our diet was, you know, we did the keto thing, but we also mixed in intermittent fasting. So it got to a point where I was eating one meal a day. But, you know, I could consume as much chicken and salad and broccoli as I, as I wanted. And, uh, you know, we just kept it simple. It was like chicken and steaks and, you know, roasted vegetables, no starches, just, you know. Lots of fat. Yeah. Lots of good fats. Um, lots of you know, beef tallow and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's Epic who makes it. It yeah, comes yeah. in jars. Mm -hmm. So we started substituting that using, you know, good healthy butter and all that other good stuff. So just progressed from there. That was, that was sort of the, the end of the process. You get to a point where you can see your results and you know what it takes to get there and you understand the process overall is not really that difficult. Like you just have to decide where you want to be right. and you know, then you get to a point where you can maintain it because your brain hits a turning point where you just continue to stick with the things that have gotten you to the point where you are with the results that you want. You just go from there and it's, you know, becomes more of a lifestyle than a habit. So. Right. Was it hard first getting going what was what was the motivation that for your, your most recent other than the inspirational question about being fat and ugly yeah uh it was you know waking up hurting all the time in the morning i mean i've I worked construction out there in the heat but 
you know, like one time the dog got out and I had to chase the dog and it wasn't even my dog. Dude, Scojo. Yeah. And she was fat. Like she's overweight. And I remember. And 100. Uh, yeah. She's, she's got to be at least a hundred dog years old. Uh, and I remember chasing her literally to the end of the driveway and she wasn't even at a jog and I was out of breath and I was like, holy crap. Like I'm going to have a heart attack within the next two years if I don't cut this crap out, you know, and we had a house that had a pool, so I would swim, but you know, two laps on a 26 foot pool. And I was gassed. Like, like, dude, I'm in, I'm in pretty good shape. Like, I think I could, I could wrestle a mule deer to the ground. I think personally, a good size one. Whenever you're ready, I'll have the video camera, but Dude, swimming has always kicked my butt. Like when I was a lifeguard, I was like, man, I hope I never have to save anyone because we're both going to drown, which didn't end up being true. I actually did have to save a little girl one time, but um, swimming is hard. Just the same. It's really difficult. Yeah. Well, I, you know, this was, it was minimal exercise. Like I, once I got my diet dialed in and doing the, you know, the intermittent fasting thing, it, it's sort of like everything just, you know, I didn't need to go running and sprinting. I mean, I could to increase my circulatory health and all that other fun stuff, but. Sure, but you were able to, I mean, so almost yeah, entirely able, through diet, yeah, you I was were able, able to. Lose to 74 pounds. So. And so the, what, what would you say would be the biggest things you did? Like cut out processed foods. Cut out processed foods, zero sugars, um. You know, high fat, good fats, that is, um, and and protein. I mean, our our weekly diet essentially was we had one cheat day a week, which was usually, you know, like a Saturday night uh, where we could eat anything we wanted. But, I mean, we ate chicken two days a week, steak, burgers, no buns, you know, lettuce wrapped, mm -hmm. like just, just cut out, cut out gluten, cut out sugar and just, you know, that's, that's when we started to see the most change in the first, the first two months, him and I both dropped like 34 pounds and he was like, this works. And I was like, yeah, you know, we started a diet chart or a, a weight chart mm -hmm. in the garage where, you know, every Sunday night we would weigh ourselves and you know, watching those numbers change was just sort of the motivation for it all. And just, you know, the only thing that sucked is <laughs> having to buy so many new clothes. Clothing is expensive, man. It is. So what advice would you, would you give to someone who is out there who knows they need to make some changes? They're finding, they're having a hard time finding the motivation or struggling to get the results that they want. They feel like they've tried everything. Um, or maybe they just are like, yeah, I know a change needs to be made, but how do I start? What, what would you say? Chase a dog. That's not yours. That, uh, your living situation depends on that dog being there when the owner gets back. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'll do but, it. but in all seriousness, uh, you know, Set goals for yourself. Start start doing things. You know, start building. Re just repetition is what is what got us to the point where you know we started becoming healthier. And you know, it just you just have to continue to do the same thing. Like I got tired of looking in the mirror every day and going, "Ugh, like that's gross." Like. You shouldn't have titties. That's and fair. I, and, you know, <clears throat> you get to the point where I look in the mirror and I'm like, all right, man, like just a little bit more to go. Let's figure out if you have abs or one large donut shaped ab. Like, that might be, a, you know, a mystery of modern science, but eventually I'll find out. There, you, you just gotta, you gotta maintain you have to you have to care about yourself enough which you know at some point being 
heavy set. I was like, it's just, you know, you get upset with yourself and you're like, why right. do you look like this? And I, I was the outlier in every family photo we've ever had where I was in the back and I was as wide as the two people in front of me. And I was like, was I adopted? Do I have bad genetics? And it's like, no, you just don't take care of yourself. You have to care. You got to, you got to want to be the one that fits in in the family right. photos. No one's so, going to do it for you. Yeah. They can't. No. You got to take responsibility for your own poor decisions. You got to sack up, as they say, and just go for it. Like, you're the one in control of your own health. You're the one in control of your own fitness. So you can only hold one person responsible. Like, you can't blame, can't blame genetics. Can't blame anything like that. I mean, I was, I was in the mid 200s, you know, like 254 at my heaviest and not a single one of you guys was over 180 pounds. And now, now I weigh less than you. So it's, it's doable. All you have to do is just, you know, start to care about yourself and take care, take care of things. Right. Freaking a dude. So And then all that also kind of comes back to pursuing your goals and getting healthier. It it almost seems it's like, like it's a, a full circle of like, when you start making a small change in one area and you start seeing results, it starts to kind of like be this big cycle of, okay, now I'm changing this thing in my life. Or like, okay, now I'm stepping out of my comfort zone here and improving this way. And you, it kind of like, yeah, things start to stack yeah, ripples you start, outward. You start to see, you know, you start to see the positive changes you've made and you start to realize that there's other things that you could do and other things that you could pursue because, you know, when you get to that point where you are happy looking at yourself and you're like, I, I did that. I did that myself. Like, no one did it for me. Well, what if I want to try this? What if I'm interested in doing this? Start doing your research, start looking into things, start, you know, become a part of a community that is, you know, involved in the same interests. And Mm -hmm. just like you did, like the air gun thing for you is blowing up. Like that's, it's fantastic to watch from an outside perspective and see that, you know, when you have people come over here (laughs) from, from different states, just to have, you know, have dinner and meet your family. Like that's, that's a really cool thing. So it is cool. There's a ripple effect, you know, when you start to become happy and healthy and have success doing the things that you're doing, you get to, (laughs) you get to see, you know, you get to see the effects as well and, and reap the benefits. So what's that? It's like, almost like it's good for everyone. Like when you see someone you love doing, doing well, it like, well, one, it makes you just feel better. And we all know what, if you had the choice to eat, to feel better for reasons you don't understand or to not feel good, of course we choose to feel better for reasons we don't right. know. But um, so just feeling good in general is a better way to go about living. So when you see people doing well, it helps you feel better. And then you know, it's just a good thing. It's like a vicious cycle of good. Yeah. But frick, dude. Well, I'm excited to see you guys go to Texas, um, and oh, I'll be getting you scope cam footage. Sent your so way. I have reasons to go out there on a pretty regular basis now. Absolutely, since family's out there, and uh, got to learn all the Texas air gun regulations, which I'm I'm somewhat familiar with them right now, but I have to know them in detail. Make sure we're uh, remaining legal. I'm already uh, reading up on them. But anyway, Mo, dude, even if all I do ever in Texas is just go after hogs because there's no, there's no bag limit. There's no, there's any method of take you can think of. Well, I think as long as it doesn't kill another person in the process, I think it's legal. Like <sighs> Tannerite, freaking helicopter hunts. Oh yeah. Anyway. No, I, I absolutely can't wait. There's going to be, there's going to be lots of that going on piglets down dude so you better get really good at cooking whole hogs is what i'm saying oh i got you need to get 
a you we're right. gonna have to weld a huge smoker that's big enough to smoke like a 250 pound boar. I'll see what I can do. Dude, I just talk to Chris. I guarantee you he'll be like, okay. Oh yeah, I got a welder friend. <laughs> or he'll be like, hey, yeah, I'll weld it for you. He I'm will. Down. Chris, if you're watching this, I know that you will try that. So, um, a sick dude. Let's we'll smoke a hog together. Thanks for being on my podcast. And then we'll eat it. And eat it. Uh, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, guys, if you're not following along with Don Shula, uh, or and if you don't know that story, uh, then go back and listen to another episode. But um, that's why we call Joshua Don Shula. But um, if you're not following along, make sure you follow on social media, check him out, uh, ask him to start a food truck. And the more you guys do that, the more he's just going to have to give in to peer pressure and start a food truck. So make sure you do that and, and message him incessantly. So don't do that. Dude, they're going <coughs> to listen to me, you know? You're right. Um, but anyway, thanks for checking the podcast. Uh, if you guys are not supporting the podcast, there's a couple ways you can do so. Uh, and some of the exciting ways that I'll share later, like I mentioned, we have new sponsors for the podcast. Um, and I want you guys to be able to get something back in return. So one of the companies, um, that we're partnering with, there's basically a way for you guys to get awesome products and discounts on the prices. And uh, that way you'll be getting something in return, but a portion of the proceeds go to the podcast to help it keep running and going. Uh, you can donate monthly. You can become a supporter for as little as 99 cents a month. Um, that basically is like a third of a cup of coffee a month that you just give up and you give away. Uh, so if you think you can do that, awesome. And uh, for everyone who is already doing that, you know who you are. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, of course, we can get the merchandise thing back on track. That's another one of the things I'm working on is uh, revamping the store so you guys can buy a lot more stuff. So it's not just limited to t-shirts and it's not just limited to guys' t-shirts. So there's going to be long sleeve shirts, hoodies, sweatpants, socks, women's clothing, tank tops, uh, you name it. We're trying to get it out there. Uh, so you guys can support, but also get something in return. Um, but anyway, I appreciate you guys. Love you. And if you're checking this out on YouTube, make sure you're following along on the other social media platforms. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the next one. Stay radical. <laughs>